So thank you very much uh, for the introduction, Axel. And thanks for, uh, to the organizers for inviting me to speak today. And as Axel mentioned, today I'm going to be talking about um, our discovery of a, a new uh, epigenetic modification within the fungal kingdom and our characterization of that mark. Um, so as you know, the term epigenetics can refer to a variety of different types of modifications that alter gene expression. But today I'm going to be talking specifically about modifications of DNA, uh, methylation events specifically. Uh, and so in the past, exploration of these sorts of epigenetic modifications um, have led to major uh, breakthroughs in our understanding of a variety of uh, fundamental biological processes in eukaryotes. Things like regulation of growth and development, suppression of transposons, and uh, things like response to environmental change. However, pretty much everything we know about DNA methylation eukaryotes right now centers around one specific uh, modification, and that is 5-methylcytosine. The mark itself is found primarily at uh, CG dinucleotides in the genome on both strands of DNA, which is important for its maintenance and propagation across cell division and over time. Um, and then the mark generally itself is involved in suppression of gene activity. So um, if a particular promoter is heavily methylated with 5-methyl-C, uh, it leads to stable suppression of that gene, and this can be carried over long periods of time and sometimes from parent to offspring as well. However, a little bit over a, uh, a year ago, it was discovered that 5-MC uh, isn't the only biologically important uh, DNA modification in eukaryotes, as 6-methyladenine was also found in a handful of model organisms. And so this was found in three animals, uh, worm, fly, and mouse. And here they found that the mark was at fairly low levels, but was important for suppression of transposon activity, predominantly during embryogenesis. Um, however, a completely opposite pattern was found in algae, Chlamydomonas reinhardii, where they found that not only was adenine methylation present at the vast majority of genes in the genome, but it seemed to be involved in nucleosome organization and had some um, influence over, uh, positive influence over gene expression. And so from just these handful of examples, you could see that adenine methylation is likely very important in biology of a variety of eukaryotes, but that there's this interesting dichotomy in the types or the, the function of 6MA based on, on the lineage. And so we were interested in asking the question of what's happening in other groups of eukaryotes um, and my major interest is the fungi, so what's happening in the fungal kingdom? Are we going to see this more suppressive type of uh, methylation mark, or is it going to be more like Chlamydomonas and be involved in uh, activation? And so we did this, as Axel mentioned, using PEC bioSequencing, which has this wonderful uh, ability to generate high-quality genome assemblies, but also just by the nature of the way it sequences DNA to also capture epigenomic information. And so the way it does this is um, PecBio has a polymerase that's reading your template strand, and um, as it moves along from base to base, um, it has a very, fairly consistent timing where uh, between incorporation of one nucleotide and moving on to the next base, except for the cases when you have a methylation mark um, at your particular nucleotide, and that leads to a much more substantial delay in um, incorporation of that nucleotide um, before the polymerase can move on. And this is uh, fairly consistent, and with enough coverage, you could start to build these robust epigenomic maps of your organism of interest. And so we did this across 16 members of the fungal kingdom, trying to represent as phylogenetically diverse uh, members as we could. So we took six members from the dicaria. Um, these are your more well-known fungi, your mushrooms, your aspergillus, as Mikhail talked about earlier, and your yeasts. And then I took 10 samples from the early diverging fungi, and these are much less studied uh, branches of the fungal kingdom, but nonetheless are very important for a variety of industrial applications, um, as well as in various ecosystems. So for example, these neocalamastigomycota are important and very powerful plant cell wall degraders. And so here's just the phylogeny of the 16 genomes we included in this study, as well as the four references in eukaryotes that were adenine methylation had already been explored. And so here's what you see when you look at the percent adenines methylated in these genomes. So here for reference is Chlamydomonas reithardii. Previously, it was the highest reported adenine uh, methylation uh, found in eukaryotes. And so as you enter the fungal kingdom, you see that in these early diverging lineages, you have uh, substantially higher amounts of adenine methylation, suggesting that may be important in their, in their biology. However, as you move further into the dicaria, you see that this signal is 
primarily lost, and we have these very low levels similar to what's been reported in, in other eukaryotes so far. And so when we look at where these marks are found uh, in the genome, we found that similar to cytosine methylation, which is found at CG dinucleotides, you find that adenine methylation is primarily in the AT context. Um, so in the uh, light green here are the early diverging fungi, and in gray are the dicaria. And in addition to this uh, primarily in AT, you find that it's also symmetric, so both strands of DNA are carrying this methylation mark, similar again to cytosine. So we think that this can be propagated through mitosis using similar uh, maintenance systems to what has been described uh, in, in cytosine uh, methylation. And so when you uh, look at where these are found in the genome, you find that primarily they're uh, concentrated in these really dense, what we're calling methylated adenine clusters, or MACs, um, at gene promoters. And so here's just a snapshot from one of these genomes. And these are three gene models here. Uh, and this is RNA-seq expression at the top. And here are two different methods we use to detect uh, 6-methyladenine. And you can see that they really just concentrate right at the starts of the genes, sometimes a little bit upstream, uh, and many times at the start site and moving into the, the gene body. And it turns out that we have thousands of these um, meth methylated adenine clusters in these fungi, roughly equating to about half the genes uh, in their genome are methylated. And so we wanted to do a little bit of validation to follow up on what PacBio uh, uh, sequencing detected to just reassure that this is really the signal uh, in these fungi. And so we did a couple of different validations, and I'll show you just one of them here. This is 6MA immunoprecipitation followed by sequencing. It's basically a chip-seq approach where you uh, pull down your regions of enriched uh, adenine. Um, and so here in the uh, red tiles on the outside, this is where uh, you detect these methylated adenine clusters based off PacBio data. And then in, in black here, these are the uh, significantly enriched regions for methylation detected by um, uh, IP sequencing. And so um, we were really convinced now that uh, 6MA is really found at these locations. Multiple methods are agreeing with it, uh, with PacBio. So what, what might it be doing? How is it altering uh, gene expression? And so what we did was we took a couple of uh, approaches to look at um, how 6MA impacts gene expression. First, we looked within um, ortholog clusters to see, just ask the question of, if a single copy ortholog clusters vary in methylation presence absence at a particular gene, uh, what does that mean for its expression? And we found that, uh, by and large, 6MA significantly predicted gene activity um, within these single copy ortholog clusters. And so the next thing we did was we looked uh, per genome and kind of separated all the gene content by presence absence of methylation at those genes. And uh, then we just looked at what kinds of expression levels do we observe there. So do we see low, moderate, or high levels of activity? And so you can see of the methylated genes, we find that um, they're often very highly active, um, as opposed to the unmethylated genes, which are much more variable in their activity. And uh, just to kind of show you what this looks like in the rest of the lineages we looked at, it looks to be fairly consistent. We find this strong pattern of uh, 6MA being associated with highly active genes. And so now that we know that it's associated with activity, the question then becomes, um, what types of genes are becoming methylated, and is there any conservation of this signal um, across fungi? And so again, we went back to our uh, single copy ortholog data set, and we looked at um, conservation of methylation within these ortholog clusters. And we found that 84% um, of the single copy ortholog clusters we looked at showed 6MA at at least six out of the seven lineages, and half of them or so showed 6MA across all lineages. So to us, this indicates that it's very conserved uh, signature found at very similar genes. And so we were then interested in what kinds of functions um, 6MA might be targeting. Is it kind of random, or does it seem like 6MA is preferentially deposited based on uh, gene function? And so we just explored this variance um, based on gene function, looking at 6MA presence absence. And I'll just uh, skip the detailed methods, but just say that um, we found that there's a significant enrichment of 6MA on certain types of genes, so there's bias uh, based on the gene function as to whether methylation is going to be there or not. So some cases, there were uh, very heavy biases in the types of genes becoming methylated, like in Basidia bolus uh, Marissa sporus, and other times it's a little less uh, strong. And so uh, similar to what we found with the ortholog uh, analysis, we found that generally the same types of genes are becoming methylated across these early diverging lineages. Uh, primarily core um, housekeeping genes are most commonly methylated, so things like genes involved in mitochondrial signaling, these are um, proteins that are on all the time, 
and it looks like across all genomes they're um, always methylated. Whereas there were some more lineage-specific cases like uh, uh, leucine rich repeat proteins, which showed variability across the groups. Maybe it's more uh, context specific, uh, as well as uh, zinc finger proteins. And so the last thing we looked at was, you know, we know so much about uh, 5-methyl C already. Um, so how does this overlay with what we're discovering uh, with respect to adenine methylation? And so what we saw was that, uh, interestingly, the two different epigenomic marks are kind of inversely correlated. So in these genomes that have high levels of 6MA, like those up here, you find negligible or no 5-MC. And intermediate levels of 6-MA, you find intermediate 5-MC. And then when you have no 6-MA, you find high levels of 5-MC. So there's really strong inverse uh, correlation between the two marks. Um, and like what's been found before, 5-MC was primarily in the uh, CG context uh, in fungi. And so to kind of uh, expand further on this kind of inverse relationship between the two, we find that in addition, 5-MC and 6-MA are occupying totally distinct regions of these genomes. Uh, as what's reported before, 5-MC is primarily at repetitive sequence, transposons in the genome, um, whereas 6-MA is primarily enriched at promoter sequence and uh, depleted at uh, repeats. Um, and so with that, I'd just like to uh, quickly summarize some of our findings. We found uh, very high levels of adenine methylation in the early diverged fungi. Uh, we find PecBio as an effective tool for discovering these marks uh, in fungal genomes. And we have multiple lines of evidence suggesting the function of 6MA, including uh, their kind of motif, symmetry at these AT sites, uh, presence at promoters, and uh, involvement in gene activity, and uh, relationship to gene function. And then lastly, we find an inverse relationship between these two marks uh, in, in fungal genomes. And so with that, there's a lot of people to thank. Many of you are here. Um, so thank you very much for your uh, help on this project, and I'd be happy to take any questions uh, that you may have. Thank you. So I guess perhaps naively would hypothesize or guess that the 6MA, especially since it's at promoters, could be a dynamic methylation? Mm -hmm. And if it is, what consideration do you take into when you're prepping your, your genomic DNA from the, from the different species to say right. that some of the differences you're seeing is just because you're catching them at like a different point in their cell cycle or under oh, a different yes, stress or something. Yeah. And so it's, it's not so much question. a phylogenetic difference, but it's perhaps mm -hmm. more something more environmental. Yeah, I completely agree. That's very possible. And right now what we're working with are uh, current samples that were generated um, in the process of sequencing. And now we're, we want to go further and do some more uh, fine-tuned analyses like what you mentioned, like take the same organism and, and check based on growth conditions if there's difference in methylation profiles. And I would expect there will be because we do see, uh, like I mentioned, these leucine rich repeat proteins. We do see variability lineage to lineage and maybe, like you say, that's, that's just because they're grown in different conditions. They need those genes on or off. Um, so yeah, I, I'd be very excited to see what happens with that analysis. So you need, for PecBio, to have confidence in uh, 6MA detection, you need 25x per strand coverage, so 50x. It's, it's not, you know, routinely we need at least 50x to be confident in, um, you know, building high-quality assemblies, so this is a... I didn't, but there was one study on mice that used PEC biosequencing. Yeah, that's yeah. one. So they found um, it was present at repeats at transposons during embryogenesis. Um, they used PEC bio. They used a, a very kind of specialized approach where they pulled down histones and then they sequenced the DNA around the histones. Um, uh, that particular mark they were looking at and looked for 6MA. So they found very low levels. Okay, let's thank Stephen again.